What is going on YouTube? My name is Mo from Light Shapers and today I'm bringing you a very exciting collaboration with Danny from Danny Portraits. Now I came across Danny's profile on Instagram and I was in love with his work. So I reached out to him and asked him if we would be interested in collaborating and creating this kind of a workflow or a walkthrough video of his process. And this is what we are going to watch right after the intro. Hey everyone, my name is Danny at Danny Portraits on Instagram and I want to introduce myself real quick. I'm a portrait photographer from Switzerland and I started out in June 2019 and today I'm showing you a editing breakdown from a contest image. So the raw file was not shot by me, it was shot by Angelov and this is the image we're going through and I want to say thank you Mo for inviting me to your YouTube channel. This is such a pleasure for me. And yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into Photoshop. Okay guys, now we're here in Photoshop. I'm going to show you how I edited this picture. I went from this to this. And this was not shot by me. This was an editing contest. It was the BRT FFA. And this was shot by Angelov. And he shot Saw Jane here. As you can see, I'm gonna blend her in. And also the photographer, of course. And yeah, let's dive into it. Okay, let's see what we have here provided from the photographer. This was the raw file without any adjustments. So I did some adjustments here, as you can see. I went from this raw file to this after I adjusted it in Lightroom. So let's see what I've done so far. I just turned down the temperature a more blue tone because it was too warm for me and i also raised the shadows to get more details in the hair etc yeah this is the raw file completely unedited and this was after so i just do some subtle settings here i don't use any presets i do some general settings in every picture like the vibrance the haze clarity I leave it like that but I adjust every setting like the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks and also the temperature of course and I don't mess around with the curves layer and I just do a little sharpening in here as you can see just on I'm just on 40 at details and I don't do a lot of HSL adjustments just here in the oranges to lighten up her skin and also in the hue just to make the yellows a little bit peachier but that's not a lot i also leave out split toning yeah let's go through the tabs here i just shift the hues the in the blue primary a little bit and that's that's actually all this these are all my settings i do in lightroom or i jump right into photoshop and then i go in and retouch the skin let me blend in all the layers here what is the color layer let me blend in all those skin layers what i do first is create a new layer and get rid of the blemishes around her or in the face there's nothing around the model so i go straight into the face and just remove some blemishes as you can see here on the skin those are just some basic corrections and also some flyaways like here on the chin yeah after that i jump right into local dodge and burn as you might know a lot of photographers use this method to do skin retouch there are two different methods like frequency separation and dodge and burn but i prefer dodge and burn so let's see i start off with a dodge and burn assist this is a layer where i can see black and white so I don't get distracted by all the colors so I can do the skin retouch and I play here with the curves add some contrast so I can see all the inconsistencies on her skin so I know where to dodge and burn this is my local dodge and burn mask I'm gonna turn it on so you can see what I've done on the skin retouch and this is pretty much it I don't spend a lot of time here I basically just retouch this in about 10 minutes or so and i'm gonna show you the local dodge mask this is the local dodge mask and this is the local burn mask 
So that's everything for local dodge and burn. I'm gonna turn off the dodge and burn assist so you can see what I've done here in color. And then I move on right into countering. I don't use the dodge and burn assist anymore. I counter here with two curse layers as you can see just to emphasize her face that means bringing in some shadows and also highlights in her face this is the contour mask I contour on her face first and then I move on to the hair add some depth with shadows and highlights this is my highlight or dodge mask and this is my shadow mask all right this is the skin retouch so far and after that I'm gonna move in to Color grading, I actually don't use the color wheel, but I insert it into my post so you can see what color scheme I was using. So for this particular image, I went for the complementary color wheel. Usually I just sample a mid-tone from her skin, plug it in and choose whatever color rule I was going for. For this one, I was going for the complementary color scheme as you can see. Well, let's see what I've done here with the colors. So let me set this up okay first off i start with the curves layer to add some contrast in the whole image as you can see i just went for the classical s curve here and this adds some contrast in the shadows if i turn this down and also bring up some highlights if i turn this up and this is the look we get and then i also added a second curves layer to mess around with the green and blue curves you can also do it with the first curves layer but i like to separate it and this adds some blue tones here in the shadows as you can see because i raised this up and and also raised up the blues in the highlights and adjust the greens so it looks kind of natural all right so i start off with the selective color layer i mask her out here so i don't affect her skin tone as you can see, I just changed the whole vibe here. I darkened the yellows of the table, add some blues here in the shadows. And this is why I have to mask her out, because I was messing around with reds here and also yellows, because those colors were here in the table. And then I also played with the cyan's and the blues, obviously, and also with the blacks and the neutrals add some blue tones here in the background and then I just masked out her jacket to only affect the colors of her jacket because her jacket has a lot of yellow and red tones in it I have to mask her out otherwise I will affect her skin tone by adjusting this layer and then I also added a black and white layer in the luminosity blending mode to bring down the brightness in her jacket a little bit and now it looks good and I also added a curves layer to bring down the contrast of her jacket because it's still distracting as you can see. So this looks a lot better in my opinion. Okay this is all for color grading actually. And then I, I add another curves layer to separate the subject. As you can see I play with a lot of curves layer but this makes a huge difference here. So I turned down the contrast of the background and also darken the background so we get a little subject separation going on here. Next thing was a color lookup layer but this is just my thing. I like to add a two strip look with an opacity of about 12% make the skin a little bit peachier not too red and then I add a hue saturation layer to whiten her eyes just a little bit because it looks too fake if you overdo it. Here's the mask and that's actually all for coloring as you can see this makes a huge difference already in the whole image so now let's move on to the so-called sfx for me usually i don't name the layers as you can see here my whole workflow usually consists of curves 4 5 curve 6 layer 3 as you can see here but for this case i just wanted to make it easier for you to follow up let me name those layers real quick this was the eye enhancement this is the dodge and burn for the environment and this is the blush layer okay i like to add some additional blush in the model's face so i add a new soft light layer and paint over with a light brush probably 
with a 4% flow and I just brush over her cheeks and her nose. I just brought the opacity down to about 40% here or 41. I want to be super precise and then I moved on and add a new soft light layer again and then I masked her out and add some lights here so the model stands out even more from the background. This is what I painted in, just some shadows down here and lights coming from the windows. So I always look around where the light is coming from and paint some lights in and shadows on the opposite. I also used the brush with a flow of 4% and just brushed it in with a black and white color. All right, now I add another, yeah, you can guess a curse layer to enhance her eyes. This is just shadow. As you can see, I messed out her eyes here or her eye only one side because this was already too bright on the other side. And I just added some mid-tones and turned down the shadows. But this is not too much, just a little. So, okay, this was the SFX folder, as you can see here. Another dramatic change, actually. And after that, I like to sharpening the image. So I merge all the layers together, convert it to a smart filter and add a camera raw filter on it and I also adjusted the brightness because it was kind of too dark and yeah this was the outcome so you don't see a lot because I don't sharpen my images too much so I added some exposure here to lighten up the image as you can see I raised up the texture to about 38 and masked out her eyes her eyebrows her nose and her mouth this is the mask for the sharpening all right, after that, I merge all layers together again and add a background blur. You can see this adds a dreamy look to the whole image. I like this look, so, so yeah, I do it in almost every image I edit. And this is done by adding a radial blur with an amount of 10. Press OK, and usually it looks like that. But I turn down the opacity to about 20% here. So I saw this red light and it was kind of distracting so I clone stamped it away. Usually I do it at the beginning but I just forgot it so. Then I like to add a vibrance layer to add a color pop. This is just subtle, just a little bit. 34% is just enough. And then I added another selective color layer because I was not happy with the background because it was not enough, because there are not enough of blues here. I wanted to add some more blue tones. So I messed around with the signs and the blues to add some more colors. All right, and this is my whole workflow, how I edited this image. And I probably have done this in about one hour or so. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening my whole workflow if you were and thank you Mo for inviting me to this to your cool YouTube channel and maybe I will do some more in the future let us know in the comments and see you later well I can't thank you enough Danny these were some brilliant and insightful tips I've really benefited from it personally and I'm pretty sure a lot of those who watch the video who are going to watch the video are going to benefit from it as well. Now, if you're not following Danny on Instagram, I'll leave a link to his account in the description below. Make sure to check him out. All right, YouTube, we've reached the end of this video. Now, if you have any questions, please leave us a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.